This time we're going to take two pretty shawls and turn them into a beautiful crop top cover to dress up any of your tees. Hey, it's Denise from Lumahead.com. For a complete list of supplies and more information, be sure to visit the website at Lumahead.com forward slash top dash cover. All right, let's get started. I'm going to cast on going counterclockwise. There's a two knit stitch edge and then the lace stitch is six, it's a six stitch pattern that I'll repeat five times. So I've placed a stitch marker every six pegs to help me with the repeats. And then at the end, I will finish with two knit stitches as my edge. For my size 12 short frame, I will be casting on 34 pegs. Stay till the end and I will give you instructions for custom sizing your crop top. I'm going to take this single strand of number three lightweight yarn and secure it to my anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot and take it to the back and start wrapping my 34 pegs. You can wrap as many pegs as is necessary for your project. And keep in mind that we're knitting flat so you don't have to use a round loom. You can use a square loom or any loom. All right, once you get to the end, the last peg, you're gonna bring the yarn back to the front and take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. And that's gonna give you a little funky look there. Don't worry about it. Just take that strand and pull on it from behind and it'll tighten the loop. Then bring it back to the forward, to back to the front and knit off again. We're not gonna be slipping any pegs. You can if you want to. I prefer the look of um, the fabric when it's not slipped. And then as you can see, I'm using the flat version of the knit stitch uh, to knit off all of my pegs. You can use a U-wrap if you want, it's okay. Um, and we're going to come right back to the front. And once you knit off, you're done with your cast on. And then we're ready for what's going to be row zero, which I know is a little crazy, but this is just to make it easier for you to follow the pattern. And again, we're going to be using a flat or U wrap stitch, whatever you're more comfortable with. And we're basically just going to knit the row. So I'm using a U wrap now in this direction. It's just easier for me. It's not that it really matters whether you use the U wrap or the flat. Just don't use the E wrap because the E wrap will totally change the look of the project. So to U wrap, just half wrap your peg and knit off. Once you finish this row, then you are ready for row one. For row one, you're just gonna turn direction and again, just knit the row. And while you knit, I wanna thank my sisters from another mister, Carol Maple from Promise Learning ATL, Clarissa Hands, and Penny Pritchard for covering the cost of closed captioning. Now for row two, I need you to pay close attention. You're going to first knit the edge, which is going to be two knit stitches. And then you're going to knit those six stitches within the parentheses five times to make your cover the same size as mine. And then you're gonna end with that two knit stitch edge. Now, if you need to make yours larger or smaller, you're gonna reduce those stitches within the parentheses. I'm going to repeat them five times. You can repeat them three or 10 times, as many times as necessary for your project. But for my size, I'm gonna repeat it five times. So first two knit stitches, then E-wrap, knit, E wrap and then three knit stitches and then your edge which is two more knit stitches so first the two knit stitches on the edge which I'm gonna do two U wrap knit stitches and then take the working yarn and completely wrap your peg take your hook and knit off the loop from the bottom over the top that's your E wrap that's gonna be followed by a flat or U wrap knit stitch and then another E wrap. So you completely wrap your peg, take the loop from the bottom over the top and knit off. 
and that's going to be followed by three knit stitches again i'm going to do u-wrap knit stitches and so here's my first second and now third those are those six knit stitches that i'm going to repeat so i'm going to start again with the e-wrap knit stitch and so i'm going to completely wrap my peg take the bottom loop over the top and knit off a u-wrap is my next stitch and then another e-wrap bottom over the top and knit off and that's going to be followed by three u-wrap knit stitches again that's the six stitch repeat this is my second time repeating those six stitches but I need five in total I'm going to repeat it again so e wrap one totally wrap my stitch and knit off u wrap where I half wrap my stitch and knit off another e wrap stitch so I completely wrap my peg and knit off and that's going to be followed by those three knit stitches and this is my third set of these six stitches right and once I finish this third stitch right here I'm going to repeat those six stitches again um, you can see the pattern here right we're repeating the lace stitch so e wrap one knit one e wrap one and then three knit stitches now the point here is for me to show you what I mean when I say that you're repeating those six uh, stitches we're not going to keep doing this for every row but I'm hoping that you guys understand the pattern now okay so I'm going to keep repeating those six stitches five in total till I get to the end and then I'm going to end with those two knit stitches for the edge then you're ready for row three which is going to look and sound a lot more difficult than it is so for row three again you're going to start with that two knit edge and then the six stitch pattern is going to be three knit stitches a yarn over a central double decrease and then another yarn over and you're going to repeat that as many times as necessary for your project in my case i'm going to repeat it five times and then i'm going to end with my two knit stitch edge now hang tight with me i'm going to show you how to do this it sounds way more difficult than it really is you ready let's do it so you have those two knit stitches on the edge which is your first edge you get this done and now we're going to do three knit stitches i'm doing flat because in this direction it's just easier for me to do the flat stitch and it doesn't matter if you use the flat or the u so those three knit stitches and then the next three right here are going to be a yarn over cdd yarn over so for the yarn over you're going to take the loop off the peg unravel that loop and take it over to the left and put it on top of the existing loop where you're going to do the center double decrease so now we go over to the next yarn over and uh, that one as well you're going to take the loop off the peg unravel that loop and bring it over to the center so you bring it over to the right and put it on top of the other two existing loops so now you have three loops in this center peg and you're going to bring the yarn and pass it take it past that yarn over peg because you want the yarn over the peg and over to the next one and you're going to knit off those three loops from the center peg now you can knit them all together or one at a time okay and then to get the yarn over on the next peg you have to anchor it to the next knit stitch so here there's no yarn until you put the yarn over it and now you're going to do those three knit stitches and that's going to anchor your working yarn right you're repeating now that six stitch pattern which starts with three knit stitches and then you're going to do 
the yarn over center double decrease yarn over again so for your first yarn over take the loop off the peg unravel it and place it on that center peg where you're going to do the cdd or in other words the center double decrease okay so put the uh, loop on top of the existing one and then go over jump over to the last peg of the six pegs stitch pattern and take the loop off because that's where you want the other yarn over unravel the loop and put it on top of that center peg where you now have three loops okay and then you're going to take your working yarn because you need to put yarn overs on those two pegs and you're going to bring the yarn over the empty peg onto those three loops and you need to knit off those three loops so I'm going to show you that you can do them one at a time. You don't have to do them all three at the same time. But as you can see, I have the working yarn covering these three pegs. The yarn over peg, the CDD peg, and the next yarn over peg. They're covering all three. But in order to anchor my working yarn, I have to go to the next set of six stitches, right? And those six start with three knit stitches the first one of which is going to hold on to my working yarn because this the stitch before it was a yarn over and basically you're not knitting off that peg right all right so here we go one more time because i want to show you one more time how to do this you take the yarn off the yarn over peg and bring it over to the left then take the yarn over the other peg and bring it over to the right so that the center peg has three loops. That's why it's called a center double decrease. Okay. And remember, we're going to repeat this. Well, I'm going to repeat it, you know, five times in total and then end with my edge, which is two knit stitches. You're going to repeat these six stitches as many times as is necessary for your project. All right. And when you're done, you're going to bring that yarn over to those last two pegs and do your edge, which is two knit stitches. And since you have three enough rows now, you can just take the knot off that anchor peg and release it you don't want to leave that there we're then ready for row four which looks like a lot like row two it's a knit two for your edge then knit three e-wrap one knit one e-wrap one and then your edge so at this point you guys are expert but we're going to review it just a little bit of course those first two knit stitches which are going to be followed by then that six stitch pattern. But I wanted you to see how those yarn overs look, which is a little odd, right? They're gonna be a little loose when you knit off, not to worry, it's okay, right? You see that it works just fine. So you do those three knit stitches and then your E-wrap stitch, your U-wrap, another E-wrap, and then that six stitch pattern that you're going to knit the number of repeats necessary for your pattern in my case five so here i am repeating those six stitches again that's my second repeat and then i have three more repeats to go and then my two knit stitches at the edge row five like row three is a little tricky but of course doable right your two knit edge your yarn over cdd yarn over your repeat and then you end with those two knit stitches on your edge so we start with the two knit stitches which at this point I'm using the flat stitch and now we start with the yarn over and then the center double decrease the yarn over and the three knit stitches for that six stitch repeat so to do your yarn over you take the stitch off the peg unravel it and sometimes it drops don't panic just get your hook and pick it up and put it on the peg next to it to the left then you're going to take the next loop off the next peg which is where your yarn over needs to go and you're going to bring that loop over to the right 
to the peg in the center of those two yarn overs. So now take your working yarn and bring it to that center, double decrease and knit off those three stitches that are on that peg. And as you see, you can do them one at a time. And now you're gonna take your working yarn and you're gonna anchor it. It's empty, right? No, no stitch. You're gonna anchor it to the next peg which is the start of those three knit stitches and there's your six stitch repeat now i'm not going to do it again because you guys got this i know you do all you're going to have to do is just repeat those six stitches as many times as necessary for the length of your particular project for me it's going to be five times and then i'm going to end with those two knit stitches right here so row six is a piece of cake. You guys already know how to knit the row. That's all you're gonna do is knit the row. And while you're knitting, I just wanna say thank you to Lorena Reese for always supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. Besos y mucho abrazos, hermana. All right, guys, keep knitting because once you're finished with this row, all you have to do is repeat rows one through six 32 more times for a total of 198 rows in my case now for me that gave me a shawl that was 47 by 12 inches after blocking very important okay but before we get too deep into those numbers let's first cast off and we're going to use the modified basic bind off keep in mind that at the end i'm going to show you how to custom size your top cover. So for the bind off, you're gonna take your working yarn and bring it across that first peg and knit off. In fact, you're gonna knit off those first two pegs. All right, then you're gonna take the loop off the second peg and you're going to move it to that first peg, knit off, and then put that peg one over to the peg that's empty and now you have one less loop than you started with you're going to change things up at this point now you're just going to knit off the second peg not the first one just the second one and then take the loop off that second peg bring it over to the first peg then you're going to knit off that first peg and move that loop over to the left to that empty peg. So this is done over two pegs, right? You start off by knitting off those two and then reducing. We're gonna continue doing that, but I want you to pay attention because at one point I'm going to modify this. All right, so let's go at it again. It's done over two pegs, so you're going to knit off peg two. This is how you do the basic bind off. Take the loop off peg two and place it on peg one. You're going to then knit off peg one and bring that loop over to peg two. And now you have one less peg with a loop. So you're gonna do this again and you're gonna continue to do this where you're just going to start by knitting off only peg two and then moving the um, loop over. When you modify it, that's when things get a little different. And I'm going to modify this basic bind off two times between now and the end um, of the bind off. All right. So. As you can see, it's nice and neat, but it's a little tight. And so if you do it this way for the whole row, you're gonna get a very tight, tight um, edge. And we wanna avoid that. So right here, I'm going to modify it. And this is something you're gonna have to decide how many times you're gonna do yours. In mine, two times was good enough. Right now, I'm going to knit off both pegs one 
and two, just like I did at the beginning. Because what that's going to do is it's going to keep it from being so tight. And the tighter it is, the more narrow your edge goes. So these two have been knit off. And now I take the loop off peg two. I put it on peg one. I knit off peg one and bring it over to the empty peg. And then I continue just like I was doing before where I knit off peg two, not peg one and two. And then I'm going to do it again close to the edge right here. Okay. And doing that right there, like I said, is going to keep it from being too tight. If you do this too often, it's going to be really wide and you don't want that either. So right here, I'm going to modify the bind off where I'm going to um, knit off both pegs one and two before the bind off, right? But for now, we continue to do just knit off peg two, bring it over to peg one, knit off peg one, and then bring the loop over to peg two, and that reduced um, your project by one stitch. So keep doing this until you reach that second part, or if you need to do it more often because yours is a lot wider, then you do it as many times as necessary. Now, when I'm 10 pegs away from my last one, I'm gonna modify again. So I knit off both pegs one and two, take the loop off two, bring it over to one, knit off, and bring the loop from one to two, and I've decreased again and modified for the second time. And then now I'm just gonna continue to do the regular bind off where I only knit off peg two until I reach the last two of them. Then I knit off peg two, bring the loop over to peg one, knit off, and I'm gonna knit this one off two times. This is my last peg, and then pull the loop off um, and get my scissors and cut my yarn. Now I free the work from the loom and I get a crochet hook and I'm going to weave in my ends. Now this time I'm using a crochet hook. I actually prefer to use a needle um, and I will show you at the end um, what do I do with that needle. This time um, I cut the yarn a little too short so I'm not doing what I normally do which is I'm going to go down and then turn around and bring the working yarn in the opposite direction before cutting it off. Now this next part is optional but highly recommended. You should tighten your cast on. So the side with the strand of yarn is not where you're going to start. You start on the other end and the first thing you do is pull the loose stitch and it will show you where you need to pull the next one. If you just pull on it, see, it starts pulling the next one and you know which one to pull. If you go too fast with this, it's not going to work. You got to go really slow, pull on the yarn, and it will show you what the next loop is that you need to pull on. So you just keep doing that and you'll find that there is a very long string that's left over after you tightening all this and that your edge will look a lot cleaner and a lot neater. Your other option is to leave it as it is and if you know how to crochet, you can crochet the edge and that will clean it up. It'll still leave it a little wider than your other end. I recommend practicing this technique before you try it on this project that you will have worked on for a very long time. I also have a video and I'll put a link in the description. Now once you reach the end, this is very important. Here is that strand that I told you to leave until the end right here. Okay, you need to do something very brave. You need to pull it out of that loop and then it will allow you to pull the rest of the string through that last loop and there you have it your edge is tightened if you don't do this you're going to have a hard time 
After you weave in your ends, you need to block this project. It has to be blocked. So I'm showing you how to steam block. You can also wet block and I'll put some links in the description for both. Um, I have video, Goodnight Kisses has a video for wet blocking. And this uh, yarn that I'm using is actually a cotton blend and it will allow you to actually iron um, the project. But the purpose of this is to shape the shawl and remove the curls off the edges. It's really important. If you don't do this, it's not going to look correct. All right. So again, this is steam blocking. There's wet blocking. I do prefer steam blocking over wet blocking, but the other one is more exact so that you can get the right size. This one is more freehand. And so getting the exact size on your shawl is not as good as when you wet block. So that's something to consider. It's up to you. You can also iron it into shape. Now, once you're done with all that, you just need to remember that you have to make two panels and then it's time to assemble. Now, it's easier for me to show you with these two small rectangles than with the actual panels. So we're just going to make believe these are two panels. You're going to line them up. They should be exactly the same shape. And then you have some options. I'm going to put a stitch here and here to connect um, my sleeves as well as on these sides. Okay. That creates sleeves. And so your arms go through here. You got one arm and your other one goes through here. Then you need a place for your neck. So you find the middle and I'm going to put a stitch here and a stitch here. And this is for your neck. And then right here is for your torso to go through. So it depends on how wide you are, where you're going to put your stitch. It's for sure going to be wider than your neck. So you can um, put it in any part of the um, outfit that you want. I'm going to be putting uh, more stitches and I will show you um, as we sew. But you can sew this and close it right here. I'm not going to be closing it, but you can sew these sections and close them. I want a more open um, look. And so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put stitches like this. I'm actually only going to put three, not four. You can put as many as you want. And it shows um, like a more open style of cover. So you're going to decide what's going to work best for you. I did tell you guys about weaving in with a needle. So I did want to show you um, what I do when I weave in with a needle because I find this works better. And that's that I go through these stitches in the edge. And then once I feel like I've gone down enough, I'll turn around and come upward. It's almost like a secure, more secure way of making sure your stuff is in. And then I cut what's left. All right, so now we're ready to put the edges um, together. I want you to make sure that you pick um, where you want them. So I use these little clips first to try on the outfit um, and see uh, where I wanted to place them and how I wanted it to look. So I put them um, where I exactly where I wanted them, and then I actually put the cover on to see if that worked for me because you don't want to sew and then have to come back and cut that can be very dangerous um when you're working with uh this kind of um knitting once i made that decision i took the little um, locking markers off i got a needle 
Um, and personally, uh, I wanted to add little pearls to mine. Now, I found the knots on the edges. You don't want to put this through a, a section that's going to be loose. And I'm sewing with coat um, thread. So it's really nice and strong. And I first sew um, the two edges together. And then I brought a little pearl. Now, you can use a button or nothing at all. You could just sew your two sides together and then leave it alone. In my case, I always like adding a little extra something and I am a big fan of pearls and so I added pearls. Now whatever you put on, you need to sew enough times that you know that this is secure, right? Because in my case, I'm going to put a few of them every so often. I'm not going to sew the whole thing together, right? So you could see how many times I am sewing this pearl in place and how many times I have sewn these two sides together to make sure that it stays secure. Um, so I'm going to put one on this side and I'm going to put one on my other end so that it's like a sleeve like i said on my two edges and then i'm going to continue um to sew these pieces together in this picture the little green arrows show you where i put the attachments i decided not to put any on the torso area because i wanted it to be more loose so there are there is eight attachments four on each side and you see they are the um, neckline and down my arm and on my wrist uh, to make the sleeves. Over on this side, I want you to notice the formula, which is 4.25 rows for every inch of measurement. So you measure your wingspan and decide how long do you want it? you know, wrist to wrist or elbow to elbow, whatever number of inches that is times 4.25 and that's how many rows you need. And then you're gonna measure from your neckline to the upper section of your mid torso and for every inch that you measure, you need three pegs. These are approximate numbers so you have to test and I know everybody hates math, but it's worth the effort. All right, until our next project, dear Luma, many hugs. Remember to share and comment.